But on the table here in front of us, we have the last two days worth of hauls. We went to Goodwill and we also went to another thrift store in Lancaster. So we're gonna go over everything that we got in those two days. But before we do that, I do wanna make a quick announcement that I am running a shirt campaign through Bonfire. The last time I ran a shirt campaign through Bonfire, I totally dropped the ball and I didn't let you guys know until the day before. So I'm like, oh, by the way, Oops. I'm running a shirt campaign. So I'm letting you know way before, it's like three weeks out. So uh, I'm running the campaign right now. I'll put a link down below. The way Bonfire works is you order your shirt now. In three weeks, all the shirts go to print and then they send them out. So um, that's kind of how it works. But I'll put a link down below in the description. It's basically my 100,000 subscriber merch. So very exciting stuff, but uh, there is a link down in the description for that. So make sure you go check it out. But let's get to our haul video. So. No, we are not inserting the clip. One, two, three. Yeah, we're not doing it three times. Four times. Four times, times. we may do it no. one time. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the stuff that we got at our first stop, the Goodwill. Okay. Okay, you want me to start? Yes. Because you're looking at me like... Go for it. Go for it. Okay. So, uh, well, you were the first to grab anything, and you grabbed this Brighton bag. Yeah. Ta-da! Yeah, I don't know. It just it, it, it just had a look it about a it. Right here. But I um, like that it has ladybugs. It's, yeah, it's oh, got they're the, on this side. <laughs> it's got the ladybugs on the inside, but then it's got ladybugs on the handles and then they did some really fancy stitching on there it just it, it caught my eye yeah um some of these brighton bags can sell for very good money this one's not incredibly valuable i think it was 25 to 30 dollars it's still a good turnaround i think what did we pay for this what was it like three or four bucks i don't see a price on it I'm sure they have like a blanket cost for their bags. Yeah. I'm sure it was three or four dollars. Goodwill has reasonable I mean, I prices. think the most I've ever seen a bag price was like five dollars. Yeah. So we got the bag. Um, Unless they're at that one thrift store in the case, like they're special or something. Oh. Um, okay. So also at the Goodwill, we got these two Fenton bells. Um, Ding, 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 ding. Okay, I'm gonna set them down. Uh, so these bells that were kind of exciting because we were walking by the aisle and I was pushing the cart, but the cart was too big to fit down the aisle with the people. So I'm like, Andrew, Andrew, bells, bells, bells. And he looks down the aisle and I'm like, the pink ones. And he sees them on the top shelf and he booked it down the aisle and grabbed yeah. the two bells. Um, they are Easter 1990 Fenton bells. I just love the painting on them, and they are signed by the artist. I think this one, this one's the nicer of the two. This one's got a lot they're more. Exactly the same. Oh, are they? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I only saw the back side. <laughs> but you had been questioning I, myself. I'm, I'm looking really, at them. I'm like, I well, maybe they're the not. Side. Okay. Well, I mean, they're they're not exact. exact. No, because they're they're both hand painted, yeah. so there are differences. But they are similar patterns. Yes. And by the same artist. Yes. So she painted the same design, but they're a little bit different. We paid three dollars each for these. How do you know it was a she? I don't actually. It could be a he. It could be a he. I don't know. I'm just thinking the flowers and you know, the I gotta penmanship. stand up for the, uh, the the other men in the hobby. You know. Yeah. There you go. Paid three dollars a piece for those. Those sell between fifteen and twenty, um, because they are signed by the artist and they're hand painted. So, oh, and they are Mark Fenton as well. I didn't notice that right there. Interesting fact too, our friend Mike Hollowell. Yeah. His dad worked for, I want to say it was Indiana Glass. Yeah, it was. Indiana Glass Company. Um, and some of the stuff that I think we look at, he's like, yeah, my dad probably made that or he probably made that. <laughs> it's it's kind of cool. It is. It's I cool. like it. Uh, so I was pretty thrilled with those bells. We'll get to that bell. Um, <laughs> but for $3 a piece, that's great, because we're gonna, you know, 15 to 20 bucks a piece on those. I really like them, and you know what? They are Easter 1990, but it's so discreet, I didn't actually notice it, because it's in such a light color. Really, all you notice is the beautiful flowers, so. Yeah. Um, I was standing there, and this was actually passed to me over my shoulder. Yeah. By a very nice lady. Yes, who watches our channel. And, um... <laughs> She's like, oh, look, it's a bell! Mm, me. <laughs> We may have to hold on to that for our own Christmas decoration. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like that. Yeah. It was $1.99. That's kind of neat. I 
sold into it. They must have raised their price by two cents in this I store. I think they did. <laughs> All right. Um, also, let's see. What else did we get there? Uh, you got this. What you, you just you know, like? I, yeah, I have no idea about it. I mean, it's... It's got a pretty design. And I tried using, I tried the Google Translate app, but it it's having a hard time reading the stamp. Yeah. And the cartouche is not something it's going to pick up because that's actually what one, two, three, four different symbols in one square. So. Yeah. But I'm not quite sure. I'm just going to have to keep doing Google image searches and see what I can come up with. Hopefully. It's a pretty little thing. Uh, without knowing what the bottom says, I'd say we could probably get 15 to 20. If the bottom is some like super rare, unique artist, yeah, it then be. it could go for a lot more. Yeah. But just as it is now, a vase with a pretty design, I'd say 15 to 20. And and it's got a little bit of crudeness to it as well. So it's like it was it was handmade. It's not it's not manufactured in mass quantity. It doesn't look like. Yeah, because, we only paid two for it. Yeah, because right here you can see the dip in yeah, the, in I the lip. Yeah, I noticed that until you pointed that out. I like it. So that tells a little piece of the story too. Yeah. Possible, possible piece. Nice. So, I like that. I like it too. Um, what else did we find at the Goodwill? We found this scorpion. Flower scorpion. Mmm. <laughs> for two dollars. You know, a lot of the times I come across items that I buy because I've never seen anything like it. And I figure I'll never see another one like it. So Sometimes I buy the them. Ridiculousness factor is you have to. Amazing. Yes. Now I feel like this is something I am able to get away with because I have a following. But yeah. I, I feel like a lot of people probably couldn't get away with buying crazy things like a flower scorpion. Yeah. <laughs> Or the pastrami thing that we bought that one time. I mean, oh, there are some things that uh, we buy that we can get away with because of our following. I feel like the flower scorpion is one of them. But I don't know. Maybe it is something absolutely special. I can't read the mark on the bottom. It is possible that this is a unique special piece. I would be very surprised. It kind of strikes me as knockoff Roseville, right? Yeah. But I don't know. It is very unique. I like this little handle thing, but I'm very confused by... The purpose? Yeah, the purpose and the shape of it. I don't know if this is a handle. I'm just very confused. Like, I, when I first got it, I thought it was a teapot. Yeah. But there's no spout in the flower. Correct. So it's just my My thought without, you know, would be, first thing would be like, oh, well, maybe you put water in here so it goes into the flower. Yeah, because some bottom. flowers have to because be watered from the bottom. It is open on the inside. Yeah, right? But, but this that's doesn't not come off. The case. Unless it was glued on. Nope. That, no, it's, no, it's attached. It's, yeah, it's made to, made to be on there. Um, and we can't read the, something stone. Iron stone. Oh, is that what it says? Iron stone. Yeah. Yeah. So I just don't know about this piece. I guess it is a planter. I guess that would be what it would be, is a planter, just with a weird arm, flower scorpion arm. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I almost wonder, hmm, the quality of the scorpion flower is different from the pot itself. And I almost wonder if the handle had something else on it that was broken off and somebody did that to repair it. Hmm. After the fact, later on, down the road because it doesn't look oh, like the I see same, what you mean. it doesn't look like the same glaze and same color scheme as even the pinks on oh, here. Oh, I see what you're saying. And you see how each piece has been added yeah, on? Yeah, like the little flower part, the petals and stuff were added on to this. Yeah. Yes, he is correct. This is a true statement. But I don't know if that's original or if that's later replacement. Yeah, good call, Andrew. I didn't even realize that. He's totally right about this. This part right here, this top, was added on to this. So originally, it didn't have this top. It may have actually been open. It may have been a teapot, but it doesn't have a handle. No handle. I'm yeah. very confused. I don't know. If you I, know, leave it in the comments. Yeah. That's, I think we've wasted enough time trying to figure that out. Um, <laughs> it's very it's interesting. Though. Yeah, it's weird. I like unique pieces. Um, so 
I don't know how much we could get on that, honestly. It's one of those weird ones. That sells for about $12 to $15. It's it cute. is a polar bear on an iceberg. Two bucks. He's just chilling. 1982. Yeah. What is her name? Eva, Eva Dahlberg. Yes. And it's called Burr. That's the name of the figure. He's chilly. He's chilly, the little polar bear. <laughs> he sells for 12 to 15. Um, we can talk about this. Oh, who's, what's the uh, netter? What is it? Something netter company makes this. Mm, I don't remember what you told Rosenthal me. Rosenthal Netter, I think is the company that makes this. It's a canister and it's just a nice little gold canister. I paid $4 for this. There is one other listed for $62, which might be a little high. I would probably expect to get, I want to say 35 to 40 for this. I was thinking 40. 40 was yeah. my number in my head. It's really nice. Now, I originally I had speculated that it had been spray painted gold because it's just so vibrant. And usually when you find an older piece, it's started to fade. But this is just, it's phenomenal. Even the other even one the is, felt on the bottom. Is, <laughs> is the other one a matching Ooh. color scheme? Yes, and... absolutely. It looks exactly the same. So yeah, I would expect probably around 40 for this. Excellent. Yeah. You know, and you can actually see like crazing in the gold. Mm -hmm. It's showing, it's showing, it's showing some age. Did they give any indication in their listing as to the age of the piece? No, but I would expect, expect probably 60s or 70s. It is cool. I like and it. You know what? I just have to comment on the fact that they are using painter's tape. Yes. At this Goodwill. I, yes. I'm like blown away because you guys know we complain a lot about the, the, the packaging tape because tape, yeah. it pulls off gold, it pulls off paint, it can it destroys destroy, it. and then the residue that, that le I've donated pieces back because I haven't been able to get residue off. It is such a pain. And the fact that they use painter's tape, yeah. I, I don't know if they just ran out of ran out of packing tape and they're like oh grab the painters tape or if this is actually a thing at this goodwill but i have to give them props and i am so appreciative of the fact that they are using painters tape yeah i think it's awesome i think more thrift stores should use painters tape because it doesn't damage the pieces speaking of painters tape these items were actually wrapped in painters tape and um they were made in germany I can't think of the company, but the mark on the bottom is KSK, and they have applied flowers on them. They're nice porcelain pieces. Uh, two candlesticks and a little jar. I don't know what we paid for these because um, they were all wrapped in paint, painter's tape, but when yeah. I got to the checkout, I asked the girl, I'm like, can we unwrap those before we pack them? Because I don't want them clinking, clinking together. together. And she had no problem with it. She held me with it. She's like, oh, teamwork, because we're both like working to get them undone. She was yeah. so sweet. Yeah. And she helped us get them all undone and then wrapped them each individually. She was very helpful. Both times we've been in there, the staff has been pleasant and... With the exception of that one lady that was... Well, she wasn't even checking staff, us out. The staff that was working with us. <laughs> yes, directly. the staff that was working directly with us, helping us pack our stuff, have been so friendly. This one's got one little doink on the floor. I did notice that. Now that, that is the bad thing about the unclear tape on there. Yes. So you've got pros and cons. I am not complaining. These no. pieces are absolutely gorgeous. They are. And, and they're not Italian, they're German. Yes, because a lot of the times you see these applied flowers and you think Cabinamonte Italian. Now English, there's English mm -hmm. flowers, there's French. And there's German. There, there's lots of other countries that made these flowers. Yeah. Um, they're not all Capo de Monte. It's not just like, oh, that's Capo de Monte. Um, and there are subtle differences that you well, you it can. It's all Murano. <laughs> there are subtle differences, Mary. and you can you can tell the difference if you know what you're looking for. Granted, I wouldn't be able to say whether it's French or German, but I can say, well, that's definitely not Italian. I can say that might be English, that might be French. I'm not positive. Uh, but I just, you know, there are a couple. Here's another one, though. There's a, a leaf. But they're nice pieces. We can list them up. Really, this piece doesn't have any damage. So this Hold piece on. right here. Hold on. Let me look. Let me look. I'll find it. Don't worry. It's there. It's right there. I know, but it's not, like, horrible. No, it's not. 
It's, it's, just it's like tiny, a little, tiny. it's not like a whole petal is broken no, off, you no, know? No, 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 And I think that all of our money will be made back and then some on just this piece. And then the candlesticks are kind of just a bonus, so. This is a really nice little. I know, a little jar. Ooh. You <laughs> have to have high hopes. <laughs> Um, so we got that. We also got this piece. Now I'm not really sure what the technique is for this. It's not cruel. I don't think, unless you guys can tell me differently, but the way it's made, it's like... It's like strung through. Yeah, it's strung completely through. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Oh, you know what? This is like a, um, a board. And it's, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of like a carpet thing right mm -hmm. one of those carpet like we i used to make tissue boxes out of them with my mom or we would make bookmarks yeah. you you feed the yarn through yes and yeah, this is a really is. fine yarn i like it i it's don't not, know i like the tulips i thought it was totally vintage yeah, oh yeah so um for this piece we paid two dollars i would expect 15 to 20 for them probably again oh i forgot to mention uh, for this probably also 15 20. Yeah. A lot of these items are 15 to 20 dollar items. And do we have anything else from the Goodville? I don't think so. No. I think the rest of the stuff is from the other place. The other place. Okay, so we're going to talk about everything that we got from the other thrift store that we went to. Um, if you've watched our last couple of videos, we've kind of been disappointed in that trip to that thrift store, but after seeing the prices on a lot of their stuff, I was determined to find a few items that I can make a profit on because I wanted to beat them. I know that sounds horrible. Does that sound horrible? That sounds horrible. It does. But I was just, I was so disappointed. I'm like, you know what? If they want to price the items super high that aren't worth a lot of money, I am determined to find a few items that I can make a profit on. I don't know. Maybe it was a little spiteful, but that was, that was what I was doing. You know, I think the other thing too is it is part of the hunt to be able to find things that you you have to pick the diamond in the rough you do it's, yes. it's it's kind of it's 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 a treasure hunt in itself um and you know what in the end if a business wants to price their items however they want they can do that um but they will learn in the long run that if you overprice your items you will dr drive away your local customers and you will wind up in a bankruptcy position like savers let's like let's bring no, it back to honestly savers. It, it, it is it, it may not happen tomorrow it may not happen a month from now mm -hmm. but over a period of time the the effects the long-term effects and coming back from a bad reputation is 10 times as hard as building a new reputation for the first time yes Enough of, my, enough of that. And yeah, we'll uh, talk let's... more about that at the end of the video. We wanted to get through the haul first yes. before we talked it all about that. Um, so let's talk about the items that we got there. One of those items was this bowl. I like that. I like it a lot too. It's got a vintage look to it. It does. It's got a mid-century look to it. Now I thought it reminded me of Collar. Howard Collar, I believe. K-A-H-L-E-R. I think his first name is Howard. I don't know. Um, but he made a lot of... Um, pottery that came out of Denmark that was mid-century modern very it's pretty valuable um, This is not his mark. It's very similar to his mark. I almost wonder if it, it's was THL some or HTL yeah. um, But I'm going I'm, I'm gonna go with THL um, uh, Is the initials there is some chipping around the edges, which is probably why it was priced low granted There were other items there that had a giant crack and were priced at eight dollars. So I can't understand it Three dollars um, for this. This piece right here would probably sell for twenty to twenty-five, despite the cracks, and I believe that's because of the aesthetic of it. Yes. And because it's similar to the work by Collar, and I'm probably butchering his name, but I don't really care right now. Um, so that was a really good piece. I was super thrilled with that. If it doesn't sell, I'll hoard it. Let's be honest. I fixed the bow. Thank you. I retied the bow. I made it pretty. <sighs> <laughs> now there was a lot of stuff that was overpriced in the case um red tags are not half off except for on super sale days which are very rare uh paid ten dollars for this bell it is a green i forget what the color is called 
It's green. It's in kind of an, I don't know, what would you call that? Um, it's kind of, it's got an iridescent sheen to it. I can't, kinda, yeah. I can't think of the name of the color. It's There's like a, a specific name for this color. Opaly green, sea green. Yeah, it's a later color, so it's, it's a newer piece by Fenton. Uh, is it dated? It is hand painted, signed C. Smith. I don't see a date okay. on it. Um, it does have its sticker, and it also has another Fenton mark on the inside of the glass. I see that. That I'm not familiar with. I've never seen that before. That's because it's newer. newer. We don't usually okay. deal in the newer stuff. Um, the bell is marked Fenton itself as well. Yeah. So no, it's actually marked three times. It's pretty nice. This piece right here, I paid $10 for it. It's probably worth 20 to 25 um, because it's a newer piece, but it is, ha it is hand painted. It does have the artist's signature in it. And it's an overall nice piece, but yeah. paying $10 for it was probably too much, especially when I got these guys for $3 a piece. Whatever, I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. It um, is really pretty though. It is really pretty, I thought so too. Now they had a bird in there marked $30 that was worth only 12. On eBay, you can buy it on eBay for twelve dollars. Yes, yeah, so that's that's the issue. Is folks want to go to the thrift store and they want to be able to get things at a reasonable price. You don't have to price it so low that you price yourself out of business, but you you have to stay competitive. If people are online at home, it's a lot easier for folks that normally can't get around that that do shop in your thrift stores. Um, for them, it's easier for them to shop online. And if they can get it for it, 12 bucks and versus have it 30. Delivered to their house and not even have to go anywhere. Um, exactly. That's the beauty of eBay. What is the enticement of coming into the store and, and overpaying? There is none. They, 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 exactly. Hmm. I wonder what that's going to lead to. I don't know. But anyway, it's just. It's frustrating. It's, it's just frustrating because when you like shopping somewhere and you can't shop there, which we won't be it's, until things change. It sucks. Um, so this piece right here, paid $5 for this. You don't see me pick up a lot of this uh, unless I can find it priced right, which in this case it was. I uh, paid $5 for this. This is called Satsuma. You guys see us picking up a lot of the rose medallion, which is Chinese. The Satsuma is actually Japanese. Uh, this is marked made in japan it would have originally had two rattan handles and it is a divided dish this with the handles would sell for about 30 dollars. i'm expecting without the handles to get 15 to 24. so this is cool we want to talk about our lamp yeah you spotted this i spotted six dollar lamp okay so here's the deal with this lamp after i spotted those other lamps for 200 dollars, i was determined to find a lamp that should have been priced higher and i found this guy this lamp uh paid six dollars for this this is murano um Bolicante. it's controlled bubbles and it is a boudoir lamp i would assume now the marble does have an issue it does have a chip on it Easily but, replaceable. Yeah, those square pieces. We find are... these square pieces of marble all the time, and you can get them on eBay for relatively cheap. So mm -hmm. all, all I would have to do is pop the screw on the bottom, unscrew it, put the new piece on, screw it back in, and we've got ourselves a repaired lamp. Yep. Um, also, I would probably put a shade on this lamp. Uh, I have a ton of shades, and this lamp would be 50 to $65 with those improvements. As is right now, probably 25 to $30. It's still a profit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's a nice little piece. I'm mm -hmm. just very pleased with that. And normally I don't look at these little boudoir lamps because normally you see that centerpiece and it's milk glass. And I wasn't wearing my glasses that day and I glanced at it real quickly and at first I saw milk glass and then I looked back and I saw the controlled bubbles and I was like, oh, if it has milk glass, it's not worth that much. Avoid it. <laughs> it was just because it was the art glass that it had some value. So. You picked that up. Uh, yes, Cute. I saw this. I probably, you know, at five bucks. Uh, I think that was a little high. For that me. was, it was taking a gamble, but I just really, it spoke to me. I don't know why it did. This piece spoke to me. I was willing to pay a little more than I may have, should have, may, may, may have, I should have. Hmm. Um, hmm. <laughs> I paid five bucks for it. And it's, um, where's my... I guess this was just supposed to be where's my hairpins because all it says at the top is 
where's my and then at the bottom it has the little hairpin graphic so yeah. it also says Detroit Michigan okay on the side oh yeah it's a souvenir piece yes it's a souvenir piece but I really liked it it's cute it's got a little age on it not a lot but a little so I like that piece for that I would expect I guess I don't know, it's hard to say because it is a souvenir piece. You know, this is this is an older piece too, and I'm gonna tell you how I can tell the the way the, the lettering. lettering is engraved. I know. That's why I was is, like, you know. This is depending on the type of metal. Now aluminum That's was funny. extremely expensive in the late eighteen hundreds, so you don't generally see aluminum items in the late eighteen hundreds. Is it hot metal? It could be like a pressed steel, but it feels like aluminum. So I'm gonna lean towards this is post turn of the century, 1930s. but still, but still early part you like think so? teens and on teens twenties because that's when aluminum started becoming a little less expensive okay. and they started using it more. Um, so they because I see aluminum and I thought you know it's probably lighter. But yeah, no, this is a nice early piece and and that's the graphics. Yeah, the graphics the, would make me think early. The graphics, but then the but aluminum, the, the lettering for Detroit, Michigan, that's engraved into it. The style Absolutely. of the lettering because if you look at progression of the way people have written over the years, it's changed. I don't know if it's gonna focus for you guys on that lettering, but you can see the Detroit, Michigan down at the bottom. He's talking about the lettering down there. But I just thought the construction of it, to me, seemed later. But you're absolutely right. I mean, the overall design, I thought it was earlier. And then I'm looking at the construction, and I'm like, I don't know, 1940s, 1950s? I don't no, think it's super old. I, I think it's got more age to it than... Awesome sauce. Yeah. Cool. Aluminum, they wouldn't have been making anything out of aluminum during World War II. Yeah. Toys and trink. No, they were they were conserving metal. They were recycling. It was the war effort from forty one to forty five. Right. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I like it. It's fantastic. Effluents. Oh, effluents. Um, so Andrew picked these out. I believe we paid a whopping eight dollars for these. Yeah. Those are just too cute. Yeah. Those I would expect to probably get twenty five. Around twenty five for maybe a little bit more. I I'd be happy with fifteen to know. twenty on them. Yeah. Honestly, I, think I mean there's no need they're you know, they're I'd be happy. They're they're cool. I, but though. I think elephants are desirable and I think that would drive the price up on those. This is a cool piece. Yeah. This is reasonable. What did we pay for that? Two bucks. Two bucks for this. I would have paid more than two dollars for oh, that. Yeah, I probably would have paid five for that. Absolutely, I, I, I probably would have gone five or six. Five yeah. or six on that piece alone, so. Um, it's ceramic. It appears to have a crystalline glaze, so with like little snowflakes on there. I really like it. I would expect probably 20 to 25 for that. Just because of the glaze. Without that glaze, I would have probably expect 15 to 20. So here's one of the, here's, here's something. So if I say I'm willing to pay five for this, right, and we expect 20 to 25, you have to bear in mind that 20 to 25, you knock 15 yeah, percent right of off fees. the top because of eBay and PayPal fees. And then we're paying Sam. But 15 percent is just your fees. So yeah. there's there is overhead. So why I would only pay five dollars is because I have to have enough room to make it worth the time to sit down, to take pictures of it, to list the item, sell the item, pack the item, ship the item. There's, there's a lot of time put into an item, so you have to justify what you're getting. Okay, so I'm not sure when that stopped recording, but it did. I think it did, like, right when you noticed it. Did it? Okay. I think so. All right, good. Pretty sure. Good call. Anyway. Because <laughs> I usually watch it, and I missed it. I've been missing it a lot lately. I missed it the last time, too. I'm like, oh, no. Oops. It stopped recording on us. So, but, I but like that planner. It is. It's cool. It's a cool piece. Um, okay, what else Let's do we have? See. We've got this. the Amberina glass too. Okay, do you want to talk about that? Go for it. Just real quick. Okay. <laughs> nice patriotic. I'll take this off. How long, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, that was hidden by the tape. I, did, I could not <laughs> see that, unfortunately. I wonder if that was intentional. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Small crack in the bottom. 
really not noticeable unless you flip it over. And I think you can still use it. What I liked is the lip of the, the jar is, it's got shape to it, but the it's lid developed. is form fitting to it as well. Like they recessed the glass on the, on the lid to fit perfectly. So it's kind of cool. And it's got stars all on the top of the lid. I like that. Yeah, it's a nice piece. Is that a personal piece? No. I like it is. Oh, really? No. Oh, I thought you were buying that for yourself. No. I just oh, thought it was okay. really nice. I, I, I liked it. It wasn't, I don't, I took the price tag off because I took the tape off, but I don't remember. It, was, it wasn't that expensive. It was probably yeah. like four or five bucks. And I don't know who makes it off the top of my head. But. It's an interesting piece. I don't Somebody's know how much like it would it. go for with the damage. Yeah. I'm, I'm not expecting more than about 10 to 15, honestly. Yeah, probably. Um, all right, what else do we have? Oh, we've got this guy. Paid $3 for this. We bought and sold a, smaller, a version. smaller version of this in the past. And I think we got $12 for the smaller version. I would expect about 15 for the larger version. Yeah, I mean, even if the, even if the larger version went for about the same as the small one, that'd be okay. Because yeah. What do we've got? Three dollars into $3 it. Three dollars into it, yeah. And I still like, turn a profit. like these. I don't know what it is. I just I like the 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 way the ship is done. How it's like a relief. I kind of like that. And honestly, a lot of the items that we we do get, sometimes the profit margin just really isn't all that high. But it's the volume. Mm -hmm. It's the the volume. So if it, if we pay three dollars for it and it sells for five, you knock fifteen percent off. It's you're you're really not, but everything else added in that is making money yeah so um and last but not least right oh no i still got that face um i grabbed this for ashton oh the bluebird the bluebird i just paid five dollars for this it's probably about what it's worth it's nothing special i mean honestly it's the type of thing that i could probably find in the dollar store honestly i mean i, I didn't it, say it uh, I don't know if that's a taboo to say in, in the in the reselling world when you find something in a thrift store that looks like it should, belongs in the dollar store, but I mean, I don't know. Um, this piece right here, I <laughs> I didn't even realize it was, it was on the shelf on our first pass until I was editing it. Did you know this was on the shelf on our first pass? No, I didn't. Because we only know. noticed it the second the second time through I totally and I'm like oh that out. vase over there look at that and I think there was a lady that had it in her hand yes and I noticed it and I'm like oh my god it's me and she put it back down I'm like Andrew the vase so I I went over and I picked something else up yeah like I didn't want to walk over and be like me, 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 me. yeah that yeah. would have been I didn't want to be rude so I yeah. so I went over and I picked something else up and I waited till she was done staring at it and turned her head and walked a little bit away. And then I picked it up and looked at it and looked at her and she said yes. And I said, okay. And I walked away with it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you gotta, you, you gotta try to be we polite. We gave her a chance. Yeah. Yeah. She it wasn't like she just set it down and grabbed it. We gave her yeah, you know, a chance waited, to say, oh, I waited till like, she took pivot, a, you know? I waited till <laughs> she took a step. So... You know, you gotta you gotta be fair with folks yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. There's plenty of stuff. There's plenty of money out there. Don't don't focus on one item that you missed out on. Focus on finding five that you can make more money on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but speaking of that, um, Mike had brought something up to me, unrelated to this haul video, but I did want to kind of warn people. Apparently, um, Mike had told me about this at the show. There is a woman in. I think Hanover, Lancaster, Chambersburg, I don't know. But she is actively going into other people's carts and pulling stuff out while they're shopping and taking it to her own cart and like making a book it for the checkout and, and stealing items from other people's carts. So if you're in our local South Central Pennsylvania area, Keep make an sure you have an eye on your cart. I just, that's my public service announcement for the day. Cause Mike said some of the workers there were telling him about it. Like she'd been targeting that store and apparently she's doing it at other stores too. So she is like stealing stuff from people's carts and then paying for it and leaving. Like she's paying for it, but she's grabbing it out of other people's yeah, cars. Yeah, I mean, there's anything. there's a fine line between theft, which would be walking out of the store without paying for yeah. it. But taking it from other people's cars. It's cars disrespectful, it number is. one. It's, it's crude, it's rude. And 
Honestly, if I if if I were shopping and I caught the woman doing it, I would make the biggest oh, me scene. Oh, too. It wouldn't be good. I would embarrass her to no end. I would. She would probably leave in tears by the time I was done with her. Yeah. And I would do it so calmly and quietly that it would be. Even I don't know if maybe she has some threatening. issues that she just doesn't understand Sad. what she's doing. Um, but she'll also grab a bunch of items and sit in the corner and like hoard them and research them while she's there, while she has this whole pile of items. Mm, and then that's decide, a, that's different. That's different. Maybe though. there's there's a possibility that maybe she does have a mental illness. Um, I just, I want to make sure that everybody knows to watch out for this and to keep an eye on yeah. your cart. Because um, Mike told me about it this weekend. That, and it doesn't matter. Even if, even if it's not in the local area here, just always be cautious and keep an eye on your purse and your, and your cart. Don't leave your purse open. Um, yeah, everybody's always worried about my purse. I, I do keep a pretty close eye on it. Um, but the places we're at, I'm, I'm usually conscious of how many other shoppers are there. And normally there's like one or two other people. It's not, we're not usually in crowded. And when we are in crowded places, I've got an eye on it or I've got it on my arm. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, always be conscious. Just be street smart, basically. And um, Says the Philly boy. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I know, I know. We forgot know. a couple things. We did. Okay, let's, let's get through this. Oh. My yeah. new Christmas stocking. That's Andrew's new Christmas stocking. It's very patriotic. I love it. I love it too. And this one. Oh, this is a um, dry cleaning tag. Oh, it's been dry cleaned. Yeah. They dry cleaned it before they donated it. And it's That's got a, classic. It's got a name on it, so we'll pull that tag off before we sell it. Yeah. Because they don't. Nobody needs the. Um, nobody needs the name. Anyway. I really liked this, and it's mostly because of this. Six bucks. I love the fringe. Yeah. Which is such a silly thing, but the fringe is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that one. And That's it's fun colors. Black trim on the other end, on the other yeah. edge. And it's just fun. It's like very boho, fun colors. It actually might match our living room. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know there's like like colors that you don't normally see. Like there's like a grayish one and like a uh, like a pumpkin-y one. They're not your standard I know, I like colors, it. yeah. I like it. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah. Anyway, um, are we done? I think so. I think that's it. Oh, there was one last thing that I wanted to talk about uh -oh. in addition to our video yesterday, but I was waiting till the very end because I didn't want to keep pushing the issue, and this is the last mention of it we will make. Yes. Regarding the video yesterday and the video the day before about these prices that are rising. Um, I will say, and I didn't mention this before, that I have spoke with the the marketing director the marketing director marketing. and others at the thrift store um, where we where we've been having issues and actually after that i initially noticed the rising prices i contacted them about it and i voiced some concerns but because of their opening store um they kind of put it off which is understandable they they're very busy uh, with opening their new mm -hmm. store so i let it go and, but, I, but I had written them a message, an email, and I, I just laid everything out for them and I explained to them, you know, you're charging prices, basically everything that I pointed out in our video with you guys. Um, but another thing I pointed out to them is, you know, they do all of this stuff for the community. They're, they're very community centric. They do a lot of stuff for the churches, for families in need, mm -hmm. for people who have been a victim of um, house fires, for, for lots of people. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're very good about that. You know, that is one thing that I can say about this organization is they're so good about that. Yes. And I was explaining to them that you do so much, you know, and, and you give pots and pans and clothes and you do all this stuff for these people, but there are things that you can't do for people and that's pay their electric bill when they're behind and pay their car bill when, you know, a single mother can't pay her car bill, her car is going to get repossessed and she needs to get her kids to school. I mean, there are, there are things that you cannot do for people, but by keeping your prices low, People are able to come in and shop and source items that they can turn around, resell, and supplement income. I can't tell you how many people I've been approached by um, and, and just to comment, they say thank you because I'm doing something that I enjoy doing, number one, and, and it's making me extra money and it's helping out with my, we'll say, disability check or social security check or whatever. Um, 
There's a lot of folks that do that and, and they rely on these stores to source items because they don't have flea markets that they can go to or yeah. many yard sales that they can go to. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's important for, for other people to be able to, to resell. Because they don't need the clothes and they don't need the pots and they don't need the pans. They just need to be able to pay their car bill, their electric bill. Um, you know, one of the reasons Put that I started... Put groceries on the table. Exactly. Exactly. And one of the reasons that I started making these videos is because there was a point in my life when I needed that extra money and I needed, you know, that extra income to pay my bills. Yeah. And that's why I make these videos. It's, it's, you know, now I've gotten to the point where I make a good living on YouTube and, you know, we go out and we resell and we're trying to teach others how to do it because other people are in my shoes of where we're I was. We're trying to share something that we enjoy that has helped us tremendously. Um, and we want to teach others how to do it. I mean, I think that's, you know, that's why we make these videos. Yeah. So um, I contacted her and I explained that all to her and she said she'd get back to me after the store opening and then suggested after I declined their invite to their new store opening that we sit down and have coffee. So um, she hasn't followed up with me on that. I don't know if she will after the video yesterday and the day before. We'll see. Um, I'm, I'm open for dialogue. I am open for dialogue. I'm Absolutely. Op I'm open for dialogue, but you, you have to understand that where we're coming from. We're, we're not... We're not upset about this because we because we can't make money. No, it's not all about That's us. Not That's what not it's about. why we're upset. And I upset. want to stress that it's not about that. It's because I can't. We're going to be honest. You know, if we can't, I mean, those of you who follow us on eBay know that sometimes our items go for more than somebody else's item of the same. You know, it's just the birds. The birds agree. Um, so, so you know, keeping that in mind. We could probably buy some of these overpriced items and still make money. Yeah, but the average person that doesn't have the exposure and the marketing of so the So we're not going to make that video. We're not going to go in and say, I'm going to buy this for $30. And the average person can probably only make $30, but we're going to make 50 You know, that's not a video. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to say, we're going to buy this for three. We're expecting to make $20 on this. It's all about keeping it real and straightforward and enjoying sausage every day. Sausage? Sausage. I think Sam's making faces at the birds outside the window. That's what's happening. She's like, their video is going too long. I'm going to make faces at the birds and make them put it. My put birds it alone. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll She's feed not you to them. So anyway, that was kind of something that we didn't really touch on yesterday. And I was really like, you know, after the comments today, those birds are like too much. All right. You finish the video. I will go <laughs> handle the pretty demons. They're yelling for seeds. That's what it is. They like seeds. I think that after reading through some of the comments today, I just, I really wanted to share that with you guys that, you know, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And this is where we're coming from. You know, it's not because we can't make a profit. You know, that, that really, you know, we're just trying to teach. That's really what we're doing. And we end up all, with all this stuff and we list it for $5 starting bits. What I tell you I'm expecting to make in the haul videos is what I'm expecting to make on these items. That's the fair market value for these items. And sometimes they go higher. But <laughs> they just can't yell at each other now. No, they'll just have to yell at Pumpkin. Hi. Charlie's gonna be missing you. Bird. Hi. <laughs> Alright, well on that note, um, we're gonna cut off this video. I've gotta get it edited and get it out to you guys. But um <laughs> we will see you guys later. Bye. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook.